Hey gang, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a very cool tester that I found online. As you already know, if you've been watching my channel, I have many digital multimeters. My older one is a Wavetech 27 XT, which I still use, which is fantastic. And if you've seen my other videos, I showed you this must tool, MT826, very, very good multi-tester with many different functions. And it's also available at a very reasonable cost. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. You'll see an end card after watching this video, or you can click in the video description area for the link to that video. I really did not need another digital multimeter, but I do a lot of work on appliances, as well as working underneath the dashboard of a vehicle or in the engine compartment of a vehicle. And we all know when you're working on appliances, if the space is very tight, you really have a problem putting a digital multimeter close by. Normally you'd have to position it a few feet away and then you'd take the test leads and you'd route them inside the appliance and then you'd have to turn around and look either that way or this way to see what the digital multimeter is reading. If you've ever worked under the dashboard of a vehicle, you would know what a problem it is when you start probing harnesses. Once you probe them, reaching all the way up behind the steering column or even under the glove box, you have to turn around and look where the digital multimeter is, usually on the floor or some other place. So when you reach under a dashboard of a vehicle or you're working on an appliance, you'll be able to have one-handed operation and everything will be seen right in front of your face rather than looking way off to the side with a normal digital multimeter. Now when you purchase this, it does come with this little carrying case. You get the unit as well as two test leads. You have one that has a probe if you'd like to use two-handed operation and then the other wire clips into the back and you can connect it to a neutral of a 120 volt or 240 volt circuit and then use a tip to probe around or if you're using it inside your vehicle or for direct current purposes, you would take the clip and connect it to the battery negative or the chassis ground. The price of this is extremely reasonable, so there's really no reason for somebody not to have one if you do enjoy working on vehicles or appliances. Now let me go over some of the features with you first, and then we're going to take a closer look at the unit, and I'm going to test it using a bunch of different components. The meter weighs around 124 grams, or right around four and a half ounces. It fits very comfortably into your right hand. Now, if you're not right-handed, it could be a problem, but this is designed for right-handed people. It's made of ABS plastic, and it uses two AAA batteries. The unit is covered by a one-year warranty. It has auto-off. It has the built-in flashlight and LED light right here, illuminated backlight, data hold, Many of the functions as follows. You can measure continuity up to 50 ohms. It has a diode check. Measure frequency up to 10 megahertz as low as 0.01 hertz increments. You can measure capacitance up to 10 millifarad or 10,000 microfarad. And the increments of that are as low as 0.001 nanofarad. Measure resistance up to 60 mega ohm in 0.1 ohm increments. Measure AC voltage, frequency response, 40 hertz, all the way up to 1 kilohertz. Not only can you measure AC voltage to 750 volts and DC to 1000 volts, but you can also use this as an AC voltage detector. You would take this tip, place it in close proximity to an AC line, and depending on how close you get, you'll hear the alarm sounding as well as the screen lighting up. Input impedance for AC and DC voltage measurements are 10 mega ohm, and if you measure AC voltage in the 600 millivolt range, the input impedance is 60 mega ohm. The unit is rated CAT3. If the battery voltage drops to a low level, you're also going to have an indication of that on the screen, and the unit does measure true RMS. All right, so let's take a closer look at everything here. Let me show you the wires that you get with it. All right, so you have two sets. So this one right here, all right, that's the whole wire. This plugs into the back of the unit, which I'll show you in a minute, better angle. And this is the clip 
So working on DC circuits, battery negative or chassis ground, flip it on. Or if you're working on an AC line, connect this to one of the legs or the neutral line and use this to probe. Doing both of those will allow one-handed operation. Now if you don't want one-handed operation, if you're going to be testing surface mounted components on a circuit board or anything else, then you would remove this wire over here and use the other one. And this wire is pretty good. They give you about five and a half feet. So this is the other end. Regular probe. Plugs right in. Right here. And you can see right here, COM. And it says 600 volt, CAT3. And once you have that plugged in, now you can hold this with one hand, one side of a component, and touch the other side of the component with the tip of the pen digital multimeter. Let me power up the unit, show you how it works, and then we're going to be testing some components. Alright, here's a much closer look at the unit. Over here you can see the LED light at the bottom. That illuminates this whole tip area. So if you're reaching into a harness in a dark spot, you'll see exactly what you're doing. If you're trying to reach between two terminals and you're afraid you're going to short the two out, you're going to leave this piece on. If you're not worried about that, you can pull it off and use it without. Now right over here, you have the on, off, and select button. The next one up is a hold button. Whatever the reading is displayed, you can hold it, or you can push and hold to turn on the backlight. The next button is a range button, which I'll show you in a minute. Over here is relative mode, as well as turning on the flashlight. And up here, when the button is out, you can measure DC voltage, AC voltage, as well as non-contact voltage, or voltage sensing. And when the button is in, you're going to measure millivolts, capacitance, as well as the diode setting and continuity. So I'll show you all those right now. Let's power it up. Simply push the red button, hold it down, and turn on the backlight as this one, push and hold. Very clear. Over here you can see there's a button sticking up. It's indicating this button is out. Push it in. Button is in. It switches between modes. Each one of the modes allows you to measure different things. So in this one you can do DC voltage on auto or you can do it in manual mode. See the decimal place moving around. Push and hold to switch back to auto. You want to measure AC voltage, push it once, it's on auto, push the range button, now you're in manual, push and hold to go back, push the select button again, and now you can measure hertz up there in the top right, and you push it again, you can go into voltage sensing mode, EF right there, and when you leave it in that mode, if you put the tip close to an AC wire or the receptacle, you'll have that indication if the wire is live or not, which is very nice because most of your digital multimeters don't have that built in. Now to save the battery, you can see it clicked off, push it and hold it again. Okay, let's push the button back in. Over here is DC measuring millivolts. Let's try the range, manual, back to auto. Now if you want to hold, just hold. Now push the select button once, AC, millivolt range. Over here you can see it doing resistance now up to 60 mega ohm. Push it again. This is your continuity alarm. The alarm will sound 50 ohms or less. Over here is your diode check feature. Over here it measures capacitance. And you can measure hertz right here. And that is everything. So let me do a few tests to show you how well this works. That's DC voltage. No big deal. I'll just take a 9 volt battery. Show you that it works fine. Nine point six four. Let's try the diode setting. Let's switch to that. So let me go over to here. Right there is on diode. Let's take this one right here. 
and let's touch it. And you can see the forward voltage of 0.4 volt. Flip it around and you're going to get nothing. Now let's check capacitance. All right, this is a very large value, 4.7 millifarads or 4,700 microfarads. So it will take a little bit to charge up to give you the reading. Make sure the capacitor is discharged as usual. Here we go. All right, hold it there for a minute. There you go, 4.7 millifarad. Excellent. Take this one off. Over here is a capacitor. I think it's around 680 picos. So let's see what this comes up as. Yep, 699. Now let's take some resistance measurements. Let's switch over to, that's Hertz, I'll do that in a minute. Here we go. Let's try this. This is a 10 meg, 10 mega ohm. And you see 10.4. And let's try 1 ohm. And it's coming up right around 1.1. All right. Let's switch to continuity now. Oh, wrong button. Right here. And you can see it happens very quickly. Almost instantaneous. Now the Must Tool 826 digital multimeter, even though it's excellent, there is a little bit of a delay when you measure continuity, when you test for continuity. And with this one, it is immediate. And it's very loud. Over here, that's your diode. Capacitor we did. Let's measure frequency now. This probe also has a cap. Slide it off. Insert into the neutral. And I'm going to take this and connect it right in. And you can see it's 59.999 or 60 hertz, which is right on. Measure AC voltage to the neutral. Over here, hot, 123.4. I can push the hold. Take the meter, place it on the EF setting, and then you're going to move it towards the AC voltage. And you can see I'm near the hot lead. And it works fine with switches as well. If you have a problem because it's not detecting the voltage, it's probably because you're not holding it in the right spot. If you hold it on the end, sometimes it may not work. All right, you see it's not working right now. There it goes. But if you hold it the way it should be held as a pen right here, get it in position. Now you use it. And you can see it's working pretty far away. All right. It's even sensitive enough to find the wires in the wall. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.